You know, sometimes in the busyness of life, we start getting so preoccupied with things, we forget what God has done and where God has moved us from. And sometimes in the busyness of life, we can focus on the here and now and the issues that are at hand. And sometimes we don't look back and see the deliverance and see God's hand and how He has moved us and made us who He is and who we are. And I believe sometimes in the Scriptures, he, the Word of God opens up some thoughts to us. And, and in Joshua... Is a, is a wonderful picture of how God orchestrated an event. And he told Joshua in that event, he said, I want you to put a marker. I want you to put a memorial, a, a landmark. So when anybody looks back at this and they see that landmark, they're going to see God's hand. And in Joshua chapter 3, they were crossing the, the Red Sea. Now, Earlier in Deuteronomy, they, they crossed the Red Sea. Now, 40 years later, they're crossing the Jordan. Joshua was in charge. Moses has died off the scene. A generation has passed. They're getting ready to cross into the Promised Land. God does a supernatural event, and they cross over on dry land. And when all of the children of Israel have crossed over, Joshua tells them, I need each one of you, one from each tribe of Israel, to grab a stone from the midst of the Jordan and put it on your shoulder. And wherever we camp tonight, we are going to make a memorial. We're going to make an altar unto God. And with anybody that ever comes back and they see this memorial, they're going to know that God did something supernatural. And God allowed us to cross over on dry land to go into the promised land doesn't mean the battles are over. What it means is God delivered. And when I was thinking about those ideas, about landmarks, about how God has sometimes supernaturally showed up and done things within our life that we're looking and say, wow, I would never be able to have that. I could never accomplish that if it wasn't for God's hand upon my life, God's blessing within my life. But as we get busy in life, as we continue to go on and do the everyday life, sometimes we forget what God has done. And sometimes we take it for granted what God is doing. So I think it's very good for us sometimes to reflect, to remember, to stand and to say, I remember a time when God did something that was supernatural where God did something that I could not have, and God gave me blessings which I do not deserve. But God gets the glory. You know, there's times where you can look back and you can have those landmarks. You can look back and when you're in high school, you're thinking about college, you're thinking about maybe who you're going to marry, and you're thinking about what your life is going to be, and you can, you can have those dream phases. And, and then when those things start to happen, when you find the person that God has created for you, and God supernaturally gave to you your spouse, that's a landmark. Because God supernaturally brought you two together, and now the joy of your heart is together. And then you start thinking about your future. You start thinking about kids. And you start having your kids, and, and God gave to you the blessing. Now, some of you guys think it's a curse. I understand that. But God, those are supposed to be blessings. And God gave us blessings within our kids. And, and we thank God for those. But even in those things, that sometimes those issues we think for granted, and we have to say, thank you, God. Thank you for the things that you've given to me. And you think about maybe your job, or you think about events. And sometimes the greatest landmarks that God can give to us are not the times that it's all wonderful and awesome and great. Sometimes the greatest times that God shows up is in the midst of our greatest tragedy. We have to say, God, I need you. I need you more now than ever. And when you fall on your face before God, and God blesses you, and he heals whatever your problem is, whatever issue that you're going through, Whatever problem that you face, God comes alongside you and he helps you through it. 
keep a landmark. Ingrain within your heart and within your mind that God showed up. It wasn't happenstance. It didn't just happen. No, God loved you. He loved you enough that he allowed you to go through your issue so God could be glorified through your issue. Many of us have been in this church for a long time. And if you've been here for any length of time, this church is like any other church. They have the ebb and flow, or we call it the roller coaster of life. You know, sometimes it's wonderful days, and sometimes it's the pits. Sometimes the roller coaster ride down is fast and furious. And sometimes we're screaming. And then we get to where God wants us to be. And God slows the roller coaster down. And in those times where we are falling down in that roller coaster, and we're scared of what happens, is when we have to fall on our face before God and say, God, I need you. And just like in your individual life and just like the church life, we are all in points of our life where we have had to rely on God. Do we remember what it was like when nobody else could help? Do we remember what it's like when you don't have the answers? Do we remember what it's like when you fall on your face before God and you have no hope and you feel like God's hand is not even on you and you wonder what's going to happen tomorrow but yet God says I got your back can we put a landmark there can we look back 5, 10 to 15 years and remember those times are the times where you're not in control those are the landmarks where God shows up those are the times where you needed God and God showed up in a miraculous way. Can we never forget the times where God showed up in your life, your family's life? Major conflict and major issues, but God did something. My challenge today is going to be very simple. My challenge today is going to try to get you to reflect on your landmarks, your highs and your lows for a purpose. So when we look back and look at your life and look at my life, when you talk to your kids and you talk to the next generation, can they see where God showed up? Because sometimes if we get so busy doing everything today, we don't have the opportunity to share what God did yesterday and sometimes if we don't remind our hearts our lives our children the next generation what God has done we lose the power that God has within our life and if we can't give God the glory for what he has done in the past will we give him the glory for what he wants to do tomorrow because it is so important when Joshua crossed over the Jordan, when everybody passed, they set a memorial. And he said, when your children ask you what this is, you will tell them that God showed up. When your children, when your grandkids, when they ask you, what was this about? You will have a testimony that you will have a remembrance within your heart and within your life that God did something great and miraculous. There's a scripture found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 12 through 15. I love what it says here. It says, Beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and take oaths upon his name. And lest you forget, and lest we forget what God has done. It's so easy to forget. But it's so awesome when we give God the glory. And your story is different than my story. But we all have stories. And I've asked two men to come up and give a story about a landmark within their life. A landmark where they can point back and look in the back, in their past, and say, this is when God showed up 
and this is what God did for me, and I will never forget. I'm going to ask Johnny and Spencer to come up, and they're going to share a story, a landmark within their life about what God has done. I think it's good to hear other people's testimonies. And Johnny and Spencer has a wonderful testimony, so why don't you share your testimony? Pastor put us on spot this morning to think about a landmark up there uh, in our lives. The first thing that came to my mind was the, when God called me to be the chaplain out at 81 Speedway. And uh, it's like you said, how things you lose. Well, I was, of course, I was done. I was really fighting and bucking and kicking the whole way because I didn't think I was worthy and called to do that. But when God took my race car away from me for a year and a half, I finally realized through uh, a meeting that I went to that God was speaking to me to do this and, and then how God just flat opened up doors. It was just amazing how uh, there had actually been a pastor that was trying to get in the door and couldn't get in the door. But then when I uh, said that I would do it, then, and I went out there and the doors just all opened to this day. So it's been seven, eight years how now that we've been able to minister to these people. It starts with just a simple prayer every, more, every, every time we start. And uh, it's just, it's amazing how sometimes you think, I think I'm not doing enough out there because I do work out there and I race. And so it's, you don't really get to minister to them like, uh, you know, thump them on the head with the Bible or whatever, but we do give those out. But it's just how they, uh, when I think I'm not doing enough, God will just send someone to me to show me, yeah, you're doing what I want you to do. Just keep staying here. Keep doing what I've asked you to do. And so that's what I keep doing. And so... The whole legacy is I hope that my kids know, too, what I do when I'm about. Even the racetrack, the people up there, the big thing is with kids. That's where my focus is because we do a lot on kids' nights because that is our future. And so we want to raise them kids up to know Christ. And so, and also, hopefully, I'm setting a foundation for uh, when I can't do it no more that somebody else will step up and take over out there at that track because, you know, there's people out there that need Jesus every day. So that's basically what I do. Thank you. Well, for me, the greatest landmark that I had is when I gave my life to Christ. And I was 23 years old, and I, I was trying to figure life out with will and want to, but I, but I couldn't do it. I got to a place after I got out of college where I'd lost my job. I'd ended up in a wheelchair. My energy, my time, and my money left me empty and broken and then I remember it started on a Tuesday where I asked God from my heart and I didn't know a lot about him but I said I need another chance at life on your terms and that Sunday is where everything transpired and, and God overwhelmed me with his grace and his mercy and his spirit upon me but not long after that, the next six years, is like God began to put me in ministries and things like that, and he did give me a chance at life again. And it was on his terms, and it was awesome. And God I was actually merciful enough that he used me to minister to other people. And that was amazing, but yet still as a person, I still had desires, and I had things on the inside that I could not understand or I couldn't see how... God was going to answer these prayers or to give me my heart's desires, how his word said. And I was single, and it's like, and I did not want to be single. It's like I wanted a wife, and I wanted a family. And this was seriously, some people say, it's like, I've been married for however many years. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. It is that big of a deal. For me, it's like, that was what I desired, and that's what I wanted. And that's, that was the big thing where I could not understand how God was going to answer this prayer. And I felt like the more God blessed me with in ministry and everything, it seemed like the more of an impossibility that it was going to be that God would give me a wife and put somebody beside me. And my own human abilities probably made it even more difficult because I fought things and I overanalyzed things. But when it became a reality, it was on my wedding day. And you, there was so much that happened up until then and then it's like and God richly, richly blessed me in my marriage above what I had even asked for that I still see today 
but I say that it's a landmark because on my wedding day, when I stood at the altar right there, I, it was such a reality to me and that it was from God that it just it melted me. Because, see, that was, a, that was a stumbling block for me. It was something that I couldn't see, that I couldn't believe because I lived with myself every day. And it's like I was overly critical to myself. But God had blessed me, and as I saw Kristen coming down the aisle, it was like in her beautiful dress, everything, it's like I just melted, but it was a reality to God for me. And now when I look at my kids and stuff, it's like they, they can't fully understand it yet. But that is a huge landmark. And what it's a landmark of is not only a marriage, but that our God is faithful. It's like what you stumble with, if it's wayward people or whatever it is. When I say our God is faithful, above our understanding... His mercy endures, and He fulfills our heart's desires. But you just have to take those issues and put them in His hand. But my wedding day was that landmark. Experience what your greatest landmark was probably her worst curse. (laughs) You know, there's a need for landmarks. What are what are the needs? I believe when we look at the need of a landmark, I believe sometimes our memory is so short that sometimes we get so busy, we don't realize how far God has taken us and what God has done with us. And the landmarks that we have within our life is just a time of reflection, a time of evaluation, a time of where God has been. And how faithful God is to us. We could take the simple things. You know, I'm, I'm such a black and white person. I, I like the before and after pictures. I mean, this is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. This is what we did before. And this is what we ended up with. And I think when you look at before and after pictures, it's, it's neat. Now, unless you're looking like... We, I've been married for 27 years. And looking at the wedding picture 27 years ago... And the bald head fat man now, Mm, not so much. But you know what? It's because we have a picture in our mind of what used to be, what we used to want, what we used to desire, and how God has in the ebb and flow of life have given you a channel, an ability to give glory and honor to him. I believe it's so important that we have our landmarks and we need our landmarks. And then I believe we need to use our landmarks. What do you mean by use our landmarks? In Joshua chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says this, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers a time to come, saying, what means ye these stones? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and it passed over Jordan, and the waters were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. I believe there's a time that we need to set down and use for a testimony to our children and to the next generation of what God has done. Sometimes it's very difficult, but I believe there needs to be a time where we set as a family, and our kids need to know what God has done. The kids need to know that you gave your life to Christ. Your kids need to know what your life was like and how God supernaturally, radically gave you hope and joy in your future. Because I believe sometimes our children, a next generation, they don't see us rely on God. Because we have everything figured out, because we have already gone through the roller coaster of life. So we act like we have everything at our disposal because of our abilities. And if we do not rely on God, our kids will not rely on God. And our kids need to see that there are landmarks within our life that we have had issues within our life. And because we relied on God, we can use those landmarks to bring glory and honor to God, and our kids can see that there was a time that I gave my life to Christ. There was a time where I struggled, 
There was a time in my, my life that those issues were overwhelming, but God came into my life and he radically changed me. Landmarks are here to serve a basis. And that basis is to bring glory and honor to God and allow our kids the ability to see that we need God. That we don't have everything figured out. That there's times within our life that that landmark was there for God to radically change me. There's a story that we have heard so many times that I thought it was very fitting that there was a two families were having struggles with their kids and one family one father said I do not believe that it is my job to bring my child up in church I don't think it's my job to point them to Christ I believe that if my child wants to follow after Christ the natural ebb and flow of life that he will see Christ and it's his job to come to know Christ my job is not to teach them the things of Christ so instead of getting in a big old argument and fight over the religious upbringing of your children. He just said, okay, that is your opinion. Well, the next year, they were friends, and it took about a year, but this one man that did not disagree and did not argue with him brought him over to his house and he took him into the backyard, and he said, I want to show you something. And he showed him his garden. His garden. Why would he show him his garden? Because from that time where he disagreed about raising a child, he never touched his garden. What happens to a garden if you don't touch your garden? The weeds overflow, outgrow. And what was a beautiful garden at one time now becomes a weed pile, grown up. And he said, you call this a garden? He said, I just didn't want to influence the garden to be anything other than than what it was meant to be, than what naturally it would be. And he said, and the same way will take place with our kids if we do not give them the ability to see Christ, the ability for their spiritual nature to be formed, just to let the weeds grow, to let the, the, the world's philosophy show up. I believe the landmarks are there to be used, to be used because Jesus radically changed your life and we should give God the ability through our understanding, through our influence, the ability to see Christ in our children and allow us the landmarks to point them to Christ. So we need to use the landmarks. We need to reach the message. And then what are the nature of them? I think the nature of landmarks are very important. In Joshua 4, 7, it says, Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Lord. The nature of the landmark is supernatural. We are emotional beings. We have issues that are out of our control. But when Jesus showed up in your life, just like God showed up with the children of Israel in Joshua's time, when God shows up and cuts off the water, now, you have to remember, these, th this generation, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They didn't have a place to hold on to. They didn't, they didn't have a home. They were weary. And God supernaturally has showed up in their life for 40 years, fed them, clothed them, and kept them. God they're used to seeing supernatural. It, it got mundane. God fed them every day. They complained about the food. They complained about what they were doing. God delivered them out of bondage. And they kept on complaining. They got so used to God blessing them, they didn't honor God. Then they were complaining. And Joshua said, here's what I need you to do. Before we cross over the Jordan, before we go into the promised land, I need you to do so. I need you to get on your face before God, and I need you to consecrate. I need you to honor God. I need you to thank God for what he has done, because tomorrow he's going to do something that we have never seen before. Now, he's already blessed them for 40 years. He's kept them, and they murmured in their spirit, and they were disagreeable, and they were argumentative. And Joshua said, get on your face before God and thank him for what he's done. 
Because tomorrow, he's going to do something that's unbelievable. And I believe the nature of our landmarks is we have to understand that God wants to do something bigger and better than he's ever done. Whatever your landmarks are of the past, you need to look at those landmarks and thank God for what he has done. He's taken care of you. He's blessed you. He's given you the things of life. Even in the negative times, he showed up and he's got you through. And we can give God the glory. But if we don't consecrate ourselves, if we don't humble ourselves, if we don't give God the glory for what he has done, consecrate, set our hearts upon God and say, God, I am yours. And I don't know what you have in store for me, but I trust that it's greater tomorrow than what it was yesterday. And if we can think about tomorrow, if we can think of the next generation, and we can think that our kids can see what God is going to do through them because of your testimony, that God wants to do great and mighty things through you, the greatest testimony, the greatest honor that we could ever have, can we allow God to have my life? to allow people to see Christ through me, even in the most difficult of times, even in the most chaotic of times. Maybe you're going through some major financial issues or relational issues, and you're struggling. Maybe you're, you, you, you're, you're going through a divorce, or you've had some major things go on in your life, and you think that God has turned his back on you. That's when you stand before God and say, God, I need you. And you plead with God that he supernaturally comes within your life. And when he does heal you, when he does forgive you, when he does radically come into your life, give him the glory. Because people, the next generation, they're going to look back at your life. And if you can be honest with what God has done with you, you're going to take that next generation and you're going to firmly plant God on your shoulders and they're going to see why and how God works. And if they can see God working in your life because of the landmarks of your past, they, the next generation, your children, will see that they need to rely on God. But I, problem, I, I see a problem that so often that we, we get so caught up in our abilities and that we want our children to have everything at their disposal. That we don't need anything. And if we don't need anything, we don't rely on God for anything. And I believe our kids need to rely on God. I remember just a few years ago, uh, Brett was just a young boy. I think he was like seven years, no, it's been a long time ago, about 12 years ago. Uh, he was just a punk little kid he hasn't grown up too much from that but he was just a punk little kid and we had a church service and and somebody came into a, a little class that we had and, and he was somebody off the street and he was asking for something he he lived in a, a little mobile home out at Cheney Lake or someplace and and you know I said I said you know what well, we just don't have a lot of those resources and he and in front of the class, he started shaking his finger at me. He said, you know what? All you church members, all you want is money. You never want anything. You never give anything. All you do is take, take, take. And here I come in, and I need something from you, and you won't do it. And in the spirit, I got a little upset. I didn't show it necessarily, but I got a little upset. I said, you know what? I, I'm going to do it. I don't care if you think that I'm going to take, I'm going to take what you're asking for, and I'm going to give it to you. Not that you deserve it, but because God told me to do it. And so it was on a Wednesday. The next, the next day was a Thursday. And, and what he was asking for was an air conditioner. He wanted the church to buy him an air conditioner. And uh, so I took my boy, Brett, and we went to a pawn shop. Okay? And I bought him an air conditioner. And, and Brett and I, he was a little kid, took him out. And we gave him, we found him out at Lake Cheney in a little mobile home. And we gave him that air conditioner. And I knocked on the door, and he came in, and he was surprised to see the preacher knocking on his little mobile home at Lake Cheney. And I gave him that air conditioner. I said, I told him, I said, I want to do this not because you asked for it. It's because it's the right thing to do for the church to minister to people. 
And I remember what Brett asked me on the way back. He said, why did you do that? He doesn't go to your church. He doesn't give to the church. Why would you give him something? I said, because when God tells you and he speaks to your heart and he says, do something, it may not be what I'm doing for him that's going to work with God. It's what others or even what you see I am doing. Giving, meeting a need, taking care of somebody that can do nothing for you. But when God asks you and tells you to do something and you're faithful to God, God will bless you through what you're doing. Not necessarily the event, but the cause of the event of ministering to somebody, caring for somebody, sharing your resources because of a need may not necessarily bless that individual, but God will bless you because of your faithfulness to witness and your faithfulness to give because God always blesses his faithfulness, always. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28, it says, Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Remove not the ancient landmarks. And I believe I need to look at what my parents and what my grandparents have set. And I believe my kids are going to look at what I set. And the actions and the landmarks that I hold on to are going to be what they look at and they testify about. You know, I'm getting old, really. And... I'm almost 50 years age. My kids are growing up. It's not going to be long before I'm retired. It's not going to be long before I pass off the scene. What do my kids, what do they remember about me? A little over five years ago, I had the privilege of standing before my dad's funeral. And I shared some thoughts about my dad. And at that time, it was very humbling to me because it was a privilege that I had to stand up and think about what he taught me. What he, how he maneuvered his life, the good and the bad. But I looked at his life and I shared my testimony about my dad. And I thought, you know, in life, the circle of life is going to come up. And there's going to be a time where I'm going to pass off the scene. What will my kids, what will the next generation think of me? What will they say at my memorial service? And I pray that my kids will see the landmarks within my life. That they can look at me and say, I know without a doubt that he was a child of God. That he did his best to train, to love, and equip me. That's a landmark. It's so important that my kids, my family, and the church have a passion to be able to communicate the truths in your life and in my life about what has God done to change you, to radically move you. When you look at the Christian landmarks, when you look at the testimonies, what will the next generation say? What do you hold on to? What do you, what do you laugh about? What do you cry about? What do you have passion about? Because just as the video showed at the start, there's so much of business of life that we can get caught up in doing the important, the need, but we lose sight of what God wants. The immediate, oh, we have to do it. We have to go to work. We have to raise our money. We have to do what God, what the responsibilities within our life. The landmark. At the end of the day, when God is speaking, when God gives you an opportunity, when you have those teachable moments within your life, 
and the next generation, your kids or your grandkids are asking you a question. Do you have the landmark? Do you have the testimony that you can say, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story of what God has done. Let me tell you what God did within my life. Let me tell you a time that I needed God. Let me tell you a time where God showed up. Because so often, if we do not communicate about the landmarks that God has put within our life, they will be forgotten. They will be forgotten by you. And if they're forgotten by you of what God has done within your life, they will never be communicated to the next generation. And if the landmarks are not communicated to the next generation, to your children, what God has done through you and for you has been wasted. But God does things for you and through you for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring glory and honor to Him. So where you have needed God, so where you have relied on God, and in your negative parts of your life and the positive parts of your life, put a landmark. So my challenge to you is very simple. I, I would like for you in your heart and in your mind over the next couple minutes is to point out five, five landmarks. Five times in your life where God showed up. Where God gave you the very desires of your heart. Or where God rescued you from something that you had no idea how to get out of. But God showed up in a miraculous way. Where God asked you to do something and you were faithful to Him. Or where God called you and you listened to that call. What are some landmarks? What are some things that you can look at and you can say, God, thank you. I am who I am today because you showed up within my life. And those five landmarks, it could be many more. But give God the glory. Just say thanks. Because remember, when they crossed over Jordan, Joshua told the people, he said, God is going to do something great that we have never seen before. My challenge is if we don't give God the glory in those, God may never do the miraculous in the future.